want to review one more time, treat this as a, a final review. It's always good to uh, re uh, keep repeating because things are not easy. Okay, so what do we do last time? We say, uh, we came up with the charge qubit. We say that, okay, at low temperature, we assume uh, you only have zero or one state. It's not going to excite her to a higher state. And in this paper, uh, in particular, it defined the so-called charging energy. Do you still remember what is the charging energy of the Josephson junction or the transmon? It is the, maybe it's, uh, it's worth, worth uh, huh? right, but let me uh, draw the circuit one more time. Now, a little bit messy, but this is just review. You don't need to read this uh, paper, right? We have, uh, what we're talking about is we have a VG, right? And then the VG go through a coupling capacitor, CG, and this CG goes to the transmore. Do you remember this? And this is the Shung capacitor and plus the Josephson junction parasitic capacitor. I put them together, right? And this is called the C summation, right? And the charging energy is this one. Q squared divided by 2C is the charging energy. Right? If you forgot, Trust me, right? The charging, the capacitance for a capacitor, you put on charge on it. The total energy you need is Q squared divided by 2C. I proved to it to you one time before. You forgot, but take it for granted. What is the energy in a capacitor? Q squared divided by 2C. So there, in the literature, usually you see two types of charging energy. Sometimes it's the charging energy of one electron. That is E squared divided by 2C. And in this paper, and some paper, they assume it is the charging energy of a Cooper pair. So it's 2E squared divided by C. Okay, so it becomes 4EC. So you just need to be careful when you read it. Sometimes you see a 4 in front, sometimes you don't see it. Then you check carefully what they mean by a charge energy. Okay, so in this paper, they use uh, the charging energy of a Cooper pair as the EC, and I rename it, I rename it as ECC. We spend a lot of time to go through the Hamiltonian, right? We find the Lagrangian, we find the Lagrangian Hamiltonian, we do quantization, and then we even go from this uh, Q charge operator and thrust operator to the lumbar operator and the phase operator. And eventually we come up with this equation. So this equation is uh, simplified to only have two states. One, do you remember the equation, by the way? Forgot, huh? Where can I write it? Uh, I, I mean, this is review, right? So I can remove this, right? Now you know what circuits we are talking about, right? So let me rewrite the equation. I even don't know if I remember. H equals to summation of uh, EC. In that paper, they, the EC is the charging energy of one electron. That's why they have four EC when, the, when we derive this equation, right? Times N, N. N equal to zero to infinity, right? This is basically the charge, uh, the Hamiltonian when you have the Cooper pairs, right? And then minus, minus of a minus, the junction energy divided by two, n, n plus one, plus n plus one, n. Now, if you forgot about this, then just take it for granted now because we did that before already. Okay, we derived this because uh, originally when we do the quantization of the circuit, we came up with Q and phi. Remember this? Right? Even we do this for the LC tank, that is the two conjugated variable. And we when quantize this transmon, the bias transmon circuit, we also quantize these two variables. Then Q is the total charge. We divide it by 2E. 
the Coulomb charge, Coulomb at uh, the Cooper pair charge, which is 2e, right? And this one we divided by the reduced quantum first, phi not divided by h bar, right? And from here, then we get n hat and the phi hat, which is the flux and the lumber. Okay, so, so if you don't get it, you kind of forgot then we can't do much now because we discussed this, but I hope that to re help you to recall some of the things we've done so you can relate to what we have done so far. How come we have this equation? And now we only say we only two states, so that's why we have what? Zero and one. And, and this one actually we further, oh, okay, yeah, sorry. So my equation was wrong, right? I should also have one mi uh, n minus ng square. Uh, n minus ng total square. Okay, so that's why when I have uh, n equal to zero, I have zero mi minus ng, n equal to one, I have one minus ng, right? So that's why the total Hamiltonian becomes this, h equal to ECC, zero minus ng squared plus for the zero state, plus ECC one minus ng squared for the one state, and then minus ej2, where you have n and n minus one, n plus one, so you have zero and one, and then one zero. Okay, you don't have two because we only limit to zero and one state. Right, so this is the Hamiltonian of this simple system for a charge qubit. I'm gonna remove this so that later you guys won't get confused. Is this okay? Yeah, so we derived that because we first did the Lagrangian of that circuit, right? And then we find the Hamiltonian, and then we promote the Q and phi, right? We remember at that time we also talked about uh, the what is the phi? The phi ab about the branch is just the integration of t to t for the v of t dt, something like that, right? That that you get the operator of phi, right? So you can uh, see it again later. So we get this Hamiltonian. Yeah. No, we start from that Hamiltonian and then we get this outer product. We derive that, yes. Uh, yeah, we, we get the, we actually, what we got is the Joseph Sun Junction energy. If you forgot, it's like this, like this. We get the Joseph Sun Junction energy. Do you remember this is Joseph Sun Junction energy? Ej cosine phi. And then this is the phi hat, right? And then we say cosine phi hat equal to what? E to the power uh, I phi uh, plus or minus plus, right? E to the power negative I phi, the whole thing divided by two. And then I show you that, I did not show you, I say that maybe we can prove in the uh, assignment. Now actually I want to add one more question in the assignment. <laughs> that this is the racing operator e to the i phi applied to n becomes n plus one. This is the lowering operator. And that's why this term becomes this term. Yeah, uh, uh, you need to go back to really try the math, but we already showed you last time. Okay, so this is what we uh, get. So okay, any questions? Right, and then so that's why we have uh, this term. And now we're re re ready to do the matrix because zero, zero is this one. One, one is this one. I hope this is very clear to you now how to form the matrix from the outer product. Okay, you need to practice it. This is very important uh, as a, someone who has taken class in quantum mechanics or quantum computing, okay? And this is this one, this is this one. And basically you just put this here, right? Just add the matrix together. Then you get this one, right? And then now go to the question you asked me last time. I say I try to offset the energy. This is the Hamiltonian. I want to offset it by offsetting it by this amount or uh, this amount. They are the same. And you ask me, is there any physical meaning? Remember you asked me that? And I say, yeah, the physical meaning is this offset is the average of these two levels. This 
is at one level, this is at another level. We try to offset to the middle. And by doing that, I have two of them, which is plus minus, uh, uh, the, the, how to say, the negative of the others, right? And last time, I keep making a mistake in the class, right? Remember, I, I then I show you how to do it, which I'm not going to show again, but then I keep thinking that I'm doing the wrong thing. But indeed, I did not do the wrong thing uh, because I defined the uh, ng wrong. So once I copied it wrong, my cheat sheet was wrong, later it was correct. We define e equal to 2ec times this guy. Okay, so e equal to ecc times this guy. And because of that, you just plug in, right? Because I need to ecc n square after offsetting, then it becomes this one, ECC NG minus one half. This is what I show you. And if I define E as this one, then I can half of E, right? Half of E isn't equal to this because half times E means half times this one, which is ECC times this guy, right? So, you, so I was correct at that time, right? But I keep thinking I'm wrong because my cheat sheet defined E wrongly on this page, okay? So, but your question was good because I just tell you this is this and then you try, you ask me why you pick up this. I try to do this and I still get the same result. This is not taking the half. So in summary, what we did was we, after the quantize the circuit, we get this Hamiltonian. And what we're trying to do is just to shift it to help us to the math to make it easier. Shift to the uh, shift the middle level because for energy it really doesn't matter about the absolute value, right? I say I uh, I have this potential energy, but if I move the ground level to here, compare the ground level to one store one level lower, uh, the total energy will be different, right? But the physics will be the same when it is relative to other things. Okay, so then. Finally, the beauty of this is this. This transmon qubit becomes this, has this Hamiltonian. Half negative E, negative EJ, negative EJ, E. Very simple Hamiltonian. Okay, and the basis, let me ask you, what basis are we talking about when we represent in this matrix? Zero one. Zero one basis. It, or let's call it in the N basis. Then the lumber basis, proportional to the energy. Yeah. Yeah. What? What question? So is EJ considered exchange energy or, or what's the, what's the, how EJ? I think we'll say coupling between the two states. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe extreme. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. So because this is the coupling between these two states, it's not diagonalized, so mean very. If this it, it, this is zero, right? That means these two states are really uncoupled. Yes. But now it is not zero. That means they are coupled, right? So you actually further diagonalize it, then you actually have a new state because of the interaction of these two bases zero and one. You actually have a more fund in other state, more fundamental. But that's a good thing. You want some yes. Uh, we want, so let's see what's going on, right? So with this Hamiltonian, then what we see is what? Hey, I can decompose this to Ej divided by two sigma x minus Ej divided by two sigma z. Yeah, because what is sigma x? It means this is just one zero here. And what is sigma z? One negative one here. So you just plug in, you see this is correct. And then you further ask, hey, then this look like just the poly vector times another vector. And that ring the bell. Wow, when we study the spin qubit, it's also a poly vector times the uh, magnetic field. Right? So let me recall, if I can rewrite this one as this, this is the same as the spin qubit under magnetic field BE. This is not magnetic field, definitely. We don't have any magnetic field in our system, but the system has a full Hamiltonian having exactly the same form as a qubit, as a spin 
under the magnetic field. Then that's what? That means I can reuse all the math and everything I learned before to understand this system. But just remind ourselves that B, E here is not really the magnetic field physically, but it acts as a magnetic field, right? So you recall this one, the Hamiltonian for a spin qubit is what? It's the negative magnetic movement dot product with the magnetic field, right? Which we, we, we studied that before, spent a lot of time. Magnetic moment is just the gyro magnetic ratio times the spin. And spin is, if you remember, the spin uh, times the spin angular momentum. And the skin angu spin angular momentum is h bar divided by 2 sigma. Right? So, in this form, we derive already what happened to the spin qubit. The spin is going to precess about the B with a Lamo frequency. And what's that frequency? That frequency is just equal to the magnitude of B, magnitude of B times the gyro magnetic ratio. Yeah, so in this case, I'm talking about spin. This is purely spin. Right? This is a real spin. Right? It is spin. This one is just the spin. We are recalling what we did before, right? It has nothing to do with what we are doing now. But if it has exactly the same form, I plug into the Schrodinger equation. Because Schrodinger, what is Schrodinger equation? It is just this. Oh, I have exactly the same form, same matrix I plug into here. Isn't that I should get exactly the same equation of motion? It's just that this is not a real spin, not a real vector, right? So because of that, I expect this Hamiltonian is going to give me a precession also about this magnetic field, which is fake, not a real magnetic field, but this vector on the broad sphere, right? And you just need to compare the uh, coefficient because here I don't have h bar and gamma, so I need to uh, divide the whole thing by h bar gamma. And then, it's just saying that now I already mapped the transmon problem to a spin qubit. And a spin qubit, I was able to map it to the a state on this broad sphere, precessing about the B field. So now, this transmon problem is the same. It's just saying that the qubit state, if I represent on this broad sphere, instead of spin up and spin down, but zero and one extra Cooper pair, is going to precess about this magnetic field with the angular frequency equal to BE divided by H bar. Yeah, question? So zero and one is basically, uh, let's say, one Cooper pair and then one additional. Yes, it's just uh, exactly. It's just these two states that we are talking about, right? It's not spin, but just the two level states we are working on. No, no, no. Detection is not how we, we don't detect in that way, right? Last class, I don't know if you watched the video already on Monday. We talked about how to read out the qubit. We used the resonance. You, you were on Monday. You were there on Monday, right? Here is coupled to the cap. Then we are going to drive the qubit because this is not good enough. This one is not only processing, no rapid oscillation, right? So useless. I still cannot make the single qubit gate. Maybe you can claim that you can do a phase shift gate. It's good mm -hmm. enough. But look at this. What is EJ? EJ is Josephson Junction Energy. You basically cannot tune it after you make it. But energy is energy. Josephson energy. You go back to the equation. It's related to the conductance. Unless you make a squid structure, like we said last time, you have two Josephson junction, Josephson junction, you change the thrust going through it, then you can tune the, uh, what do you call, the uh, Josephson junction energy. But this is not a good way uh, because it has a lot of noise, thrust noise, yeah, because you're applying the thrust, right? That's all I can say, what, exactly why it's not good. I know it has more noise, that's all I know, right? Another word is 
E. E is the charging energy. Again, it's difficult to change the capacitance, right? And of course, it's also related to the background charge, E NG. NG. But this NG has a sweet spot. We want to operate at one half. Due to very rare reason, this is, has the uh, least, uh, I think it has the least charge noise. Okay, we will talk about NG later. But, but anyway, it's just that, yeah, what I want to show here is it's still useless at this moment, but you see that we map the very complicated problem to a spin cubic problem. And this is the main achievement I want to make in this class, which I was confused to me in the past, right? So we can understand the spin qubit fairly well, kind of because it can map to the classical system. We ag agree it will precess, not more precession. And we went gone through the math, right? And we proved that how it precess, how, how it does the rapid oscillation. Then how about this superconducting QB? It's completely out of our space. We have no understanding how it works. But then we go through Lagrangian, Hamiltonian, quantize the circuit, okay. and eventually we come up with the Hamiltonian. It's exactly the same as the spin qubit. But now the magnetic field is the, related to the Josephson junction energy and the charging energy. Okay, yeah. So can you generalize this to any type of qubit then? You could, you could do the same thing for any, like trapped ion or whatever. It could ultimately do something. Chamayan, you, yeah, yeah, Chamayan, you can, but Cha is actually pretty straightforward uh, compared to spin cube, compared to this. Yeah, so we'll cover that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but yes, but eventually, isn't that we, before we learn this hardware, right? Everyone, when they talk about the qubit, they all show us the broad sphere. They did not tell us whether it's a photonic qubit, a superconducting qubit, or whatever. So I think they all can be generalized to that. Yeah. So that's why broad sphere is so important. But now this broad sphere, you remember the B is actually just this vector. It's not a real vector in our 3D space, right? This is completely not related now. Remember, even in the spin qubit, I say the, uh, the B is the real vector in the space, right? But now this one is not completely not relevant to our space, right? What, what, I don't have an energy pointing to the up and then ener another energy pointing to the uh, x direction, yeah? Yeah, because I'm trying to compare to spin because in spin, you had the magnetic field, yeah. which was an agent to cause that precession. Yeah. Here, this precession is happening, I guess, naturally, if you have a super, I guess, superconducting good and yeah. you know, as long as you get it going, it will start this precession. Yes. And this is just as if you have a magnetic field for a spin qubit, but this is not a spin qubit. But now you can imagine it is a spin qubit precessing about this magnetic field, right? Fake a magnetic field. Okay, I know I spent a lot of time, but it's good to keep uh, repeating, right? Then I talk about diagonalization, too difficult. I skipped it because of time, and I don't think we need that because I did not try to diagonalize. I just want to show you, I try to diagonalize the matrix, and it is very difficult. And then that's it, I stop there. And then I want to bring to a special case that can help, me, help, help us diagonalize very easily is this NG, right? This, by the way, this diagonalization is relevant to your question just now. What is EJ? They are coupling to each other. I want to diagonalize it so I can find the eigenstates of this Hamiltonian, right? So, okay. So if, let's look at this, right? So now, because I know this whole Hamiltonian is just a magnetic field, fake magnetic field, and a fake spin, right? So I still can write the Hamiltonian as this, right? This is just because I already have the formalism. Then I say that, it is just the same as spin qubit. So I write it as h bar omega q divided by omega l divided by 2 n dot sigma uh, sigma, sigma uh, bar, right? Because this is the Hamiltonian, if you remember, for the spin qubit. And n referring to the direction of the magnetic field. n is b divided by this one. So if I have a magnetic field in the n direction, the univector direction, just extreme case. What if this in the z direction? If this is in the z direction, isn't this a sigma z? And that is what we have, right? H bar omega L 
divided by two sigma z is the Hamiltonian, right? But this is the general form. N equal to this. So what is the uh, normalized vector for? What is the unit vector? It's just B divided by its magnitude, right? And it is Ej divided by this, zero Ej divided by this, right? And now I try to look at this direction. I look at this x is here, z is here, x is here, z is here, the b is here, right? So I have a theta to z. And now we can see clearly, of course, Ej refer to this component in the x direction, and E refer to the component in the z direction. Right? I, I, this flip a little bit, right? Because I put x to here and c to it. Do you see this? I just take the 3D into 2D. And so you clearly will see some relationship between using sine cosine. But before that, then what is omega L? Omega L, of course, again, is the E tot total magnitude, right? Here, B magnitude divided by H bar. So what is the magnitude of B, which is this is equal to? E squared plus EJ squared, right? This is the total magnitude, right? This is just omega, omega L equals to BE divided by H bar, right? You, you need to take it for granted if you forgot the equation, right? Because I won't be able to remember also if I, I were you, okay? Uh, just think about the flow. So now I try to go into this equation. H bar omega is just equals to this thing, right? H bar omega divided by two, which is this one, right? H bar omega is just a magnitude, E squared plus EJ squared. And then this one, of course, is NX sigma X plus NY sigma Y plus NZ sigma Z, correct? N dot sigma, right? This one you need to be very familiar with. And well, I don't have Y components, right? So I ignore it. And then I only have the uh, Z component, right? So I, I an X component that I just put in. But this one, actually, you don't need to do that. The reason I do that is just because of that paper and then they start from there. This one is just going back equal to this. Yeah? I just factorize this E squared plus EJ out. Do you see that? I factorize this out. Do you see that? I, may, I, I might even do it here, if you don't see it. I can take this out, become square root 2 e squared plus ej squared times negative e divided by the square root, ej divided by the square root, ej divided by the square root, e divided by the square root. Huh? The 2 is wrong, right? Say again. Yeah, it can, so I just take this out, right? And, and of course, I put a negative here also. That's why you plus, 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 minus, right? And that is what you have. Negative here, plus, 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 minus. Right? So I start from here. Everything is the same. I don't need to do this, but it's a good for checking. And the reason I do this is when I prepare the material, I was following that paper, and that paper start with this, then I copy this, okay? But I hope that you see that we are not inventing anything new. They are equivalent, right? So you can go from different directions that you have a better understanding of this. Uh, let me remove this because I guess you will get confused in the future if you are not watching the video. Okay, good. Then what? The good thing about this is E divided by this guy. This one is square root e square plus e j square, right? This is the magnitude of the magnetic field, the fake magnetic field. So e divided by this one is cosine theta. E j divided by this one is sine theta. So that's why we come with cosine theta, sine theta, sine theta, negative cosine theta, okay? And now we consider a sweet spot starting from here. So we have not yet. This is still general. So we consider ng equal to half. When ng equal to half, what is e? e is 1 minus 2 ng. Then it means the e is going to be 0. This is the sweet spot for the charge qubit. Uh, they operate it. 
because it has the best uh, least uh, noise sensitivity. Okay. Then what? Then this term becomes zero because or you think about ng equals zero, e equals zero, right? Then theta equal to zero, right? No, theta equal to E equal to, oh, E equals zero, then theta equal to pi over two, right? Because everything goes through here. So that you get this zero, one, one, zero. Now you get very simple Hamiltonian, still negative h bar omega L divided by two, but instead of n dot sigma, you get sigma x. But this is still not what we learned, right? The simple one is sigma z, right? So, then what can we do? We just do some diagonalization. Start with H. So this is under the assumption when NG equal to half, we call it the sweet spot of this system. Then we have this. So what we can do is just rotate the coordinate. So basically, when you reach this state, theta u pi over 2, b is pointing in the x direction. Make sense? When theta equal to pi over 2. Right? Look at this figure. When theta equal to pi over 2, b is pointing at the x direction. Right? But, but, but however, our 0 and 1 are on the north and south pole, right? So this is not good for us. So we decided to do a rotation. Rotate by pi over 2 so that the B is aligned with C. We rotate the system. So we do a unitary transformation, right? Do you remember how to do the unitary transformation? It's just from O coordinates to the new coordinate, right? Uh, did we, I think we mentioned this in the first part, did we? Yeah, I think so. We did definitely mention E225, but I think I also repeat this at the beginning. Okay, but let, if you forgot, right? So treat this as a review for exam. Okay, so do not think that I'm wasting your time. So what do I want to rotate? This is the transformation of the, uh, we are actually rotating the, what, actually I forgot what we are rotating. We are rotating the coordinate, not the vector. Okay, so I'm going to rotate from Z to S, right? So how do we find the transformation matrix? It's equals to the new zero. Yeah. I actually rotating the coordinate. Like okay, okay. So so you're right, sorry. So because I'm rotating coordinates, it's from Z to X, right? But it's equivalent to rotating the vector from X to Z. Okay? Do you understand what I mean? I want to rotate the coordinates, so Z becomes X, right? Rotate the coordinate, just like I ro rotate the block sphere for in this direction. If I rotate the block sphere, isn't the Z will become X? Correct? But this is the same as a rotating vector in the opposite direction from X to Z. Look at this. Now this is pointing out, right? And I'm the coordinate. I want to rotate the coordinate. Maybe how is this? I'm, I'm, I'm horizontal, right? This for me is on my right, right? I want to rotate the coordinate, so I rotate to here. But isn't the same as this guy, rotate another direction, right? That's what I want to say, yeah? So, so we are trying to rotate the coordinates from what? Z to X, so is that the same as rotating vector from X to Z? Okay, but we're talking about co coordinates. So uh, we're talking Z to X, so it is from new. So, so the new one is still the X because I'm rotating the coordinates. Yeah, you remember this, right? I'm rotating coordinates. But you're rotating coordinate, but I want to represent in the... So which one is the new coordinate? My God. I think this will be in the X space. And then this will be diagonal sigma. I mean, effectively, it's the same. Uh, in X, X spaces. Yeah, you're diagonalizing the sigma X. 
Yeah, your diagonal so the sigma x, you are right. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to go to this thing. You, you, what you are saying is good. What we're doing is just diagonalizing this one, right? Sigma x will become sigma c, right? So, so you can try that. Uh, then you, of course, naturally, you will become a sigma z, right? And then compared to the spin qb, which has the magnetic field in the z direction, it also oscillating at h bar omega l, right? So it's again precessing. Now, what anything new we have learned, actually, we have learned nothing new so far for these pages. The only thing we learn really new is this one. We say that this uh, superconductive qubit is just like the spin qubit with its state processing about the fake magnetic field. And what I'm trying to show you later is just say that, okay, now what if we have half ng equal to half? Oh, then the spin is in the, the magnetic field is x direction. It is very simple, right? And what if I further diagonalize it that means rotate it, then the magnetic field in the z direction, again, very simple. We're just repeating, just simplifying. So, so we are not doing anything new, but this is just some skill, right? Is that okay with you? Yeah. The background charge. So if you remember, the circuit, the NG, right? maybe you forgot already. The circuit, this is the circuit. We have CG. And then we have this transmon, yeah, and and we define QG equals to VG times CG. Just a definition. This doesn't mean anything, right? Because it is not the voltage across CG. It's just QG on one side. QG times CG equal to, I mean. Vg times Cg equal to Qg, just a definition. And what is Ng? Ng is just equals to Qg divided by 2e, number of Cooper pair due to this Qg. That's it. But it does have a physical meaning, of course. It's talking about due to this gate, how much charge I induce here. Not exactly, but indirectly induce this Ng. Okay? Make sense? So QG is the charge on CG, right? Say again? QG is the charge across CG. Not across. Again, if the charge across CG, it will be the voltage across CG times CG. But this is only QG times CG. Right? Okay. What does the G stand for again? G? Just call it gate, maybe. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't know why they call it gate. But it is a gate. We're controlling it. That is true. No, no, no. When it is precessing, it just uh, becomes a superposition of zero and one extra Cooper pair. CG, NG is always there at the background charge. Mm -hmm. You start with background charge, and then I have an extra or a zero extra Cooper pair. That's changing the capacitance. No, it's not changing capacitance. Okay, so what's changing the capacitance? Nothing is changing the capacitance. Why do you think capacitance is changing? Okay. The so capacitance are all constant. Okay, so we're trying that for the reflect on the No, this is control. This is again not the read out qubit, right? We're not talking about read out, we're talking about control. Yeah. That, that, that one is like the state pulling the resonator, like what we said last time, pulling the resonant frequency when you're doing the readout. Okay? Okay, good. Now, so at least...